What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, y'all, today's topic. Uh, first off, I just want to thank you guys that came into the live stream last night. We talked a little bit about what under defensive fronts mean, and we talked a little bit about, you know, proposed fits and, and things like that on the roster. Things, things of that sort for you guys that uh, made it to the live stream. Greatly appreciate it. But uh, today's topic, I'm going to talk about safeties for just a few minutes, guys. So, as I looked at our, our at our safety position, the first thing to really talk about is the importance it's going to play. Because it will have an, an added importance to this defense, right? I mean, knowing Jonathan Gannon's experience and where he's came from and the guys he's coached under and, and you know, coming out of, you know, from Minnesota to the Indianapolis system – we know those safeties are gonna they're gonna play an important role here, and he's already reacquainted himself with one former player that was there. wasn't He, he was an assistant secondary coach, so I mean we have Anthony Harris back, who's probably gonna be one of the big key players since he understands where Gannon's gonna want guys in the secondary, what the responsibilities and things are gonna be. Uh, my opinion is if Anthony Harris has a really good season, kind of like he had a few years ago with you know a big you know interception and turnover year this defense is probably going to be a lot better than what people think. Now, there's some question marks here as well, though, guys. I'm, I'm not going to act like there's not. There are. Rodney McLeod was having one heck of a season before he went down with a second ACL injury. And now we got a guy that's over 30 years, over 30 years old, my bad, guys, coming off a second ACL injury. And that concerns me. That That's a big, big concern to me because, man, he was playing really well before that injury. And if, if he comes back right with, Anthony Harris and Rodney McLeod and Kayvon Wallace and you know then we got some good depth pieces man the three to four man rotation at safety could be quite good but I, I can't project health guys I just I don't know how, you, you know it's difficult to project health I do know that we're probably going to see uh more quarters coverage I mean we played quarters underneath Jim Schwartz but let's hope that we play quarters coverage adequately this time and, and guys aren't confused and we're not getting burnt the way Minnesota burn us in 20 uh 2019 you guys remember that game to where, man, they just they just went off on us because of the communication issues in the secondary when we were playing quarters against them. But I will say that we'll probably see a lot of quarters, a lot of cover two. We're going to see a lot of two safety stuff, okay? Um, we'll still be a pre predominantly a cover three. I still think you'll see some big. I mean, I don't think we're going to completely go away from big, but it may not be as big, pun intended, you know, a part of our defense as it once was underneath Jim Schwartz. But it's not going to go away because I still think we'll see that, to be quite honest. Um, as I look at it, though, if something's not right with those top two players, that's where things get a little concerning for me. Because Kayvon Wallace would have to take a major step forward, guys. I don't know if he's ready or not. There's just not enough film on him yet, and I think he was playing a little out of place. Uh, pretty much he came in to replace Rodney McLeod, minus the one game in San Francisco, which he also pretty much played free. So he played mostly free safety last year, and he's a little bit more of a strong safety, a little bit more of a box player, a guy that you can kind of lock up one-on-one -on, -one on, on a slot, or you can lock up one-on-one -on, -one on a tight end. Uh, not necessarily the roving type. I don't really think that's that's his strength. I'm not saying that he can't do it. I'm just saying that I think he's better as, as a strong than as a free. And I know that sometimes in some defenses, those terms really mean absolutely nothing. They're, they're interchangeable, but it is kind of what it is there. Um... Sorry, someone was like looking at me like I was crazy as they were driving by. It was kind of funny. Uh, outside of that, guys, the, the other thing I can say is that, you know, I, I look at a guy like Graylin Arnold, undrafted rookie free agent. You can't use that title anymore, right? I, he, you know, everyone kind of gets on me because I, you know, I, I called out Jaquette and I said Jaquette could be potentially be a camp star. I like his film, and he ended up proving me right, right? I mean, he did stick around the roster. He did get in games. I wasn't expecting him to become a starter. I mean, that was pure desperation out of the Eagles' part, but. You know, there was talent there, and, and it did show out on his film. The other guy I kind of pointed out in the secondary was I really liked Graylin Arnold. I was pretty high on Graylin Arnold, and I was pretty high on the kid coming out of Army, although I said that he's a little shorter. He's not really an outside corner in the NFL, and I'm not too sure how he's going to adapt to either being a nickel or a safety, and he didn't quite make it. He's still sticking around, but I, I think his struggle is a little higher uphill. Graylin Arnold, to me, though, is a guy that has potential to play. He could be a difference maker, right? Then we have Marcus Epps. Marcus Epps, to me, is, is a perfectly adequate fourth safety. A guy that in an emergency, you can plug him as a third safety. He's a good special teams player. That's the role you want a guy like Marcus Epps in. You don't want Marcus Epps taking first-team snaps on, on any kind of regular, consistent basis. I, 
You know, I think Marcus Epps is more athletic than people give him credit for. I do think he's definitely a more rangy safety. He's a little bit more of a natural free. But I do wonder about his eye discipline. He's been taken a few times on film when you really watch him. Uh, past that, guys, you know, we, we got Andrew Adams. Andrew Adams is a veteran guy. He played with the Giants for a couple of years. Uh, then he played on Tampa Bay. Didn't really get a lot of snaps during the Super Bowl uh, year. Last season with Tampa Bay, he really wasn't a big impact on their defense. But, you know, coming into Philadelphia, he is kind of a veteran, you know, young veteran, you know, kind of experienced guy here that he's got a shot. I mean, I look at it as five guys kind of competing here, which is, you know, you got Anthony Harris, you got Rodney McLeod, who are probably going to be on the team, barring some kind of unforeseen thing happening. And then you have Kayvon Wallace, who's likely to be on the team, you know, last year, fourth round pick. I mean, I think he's fairly secure no matter how good or bad his camp is. His camp would have to be particularly bad not to make it. Um, and then I think it's a little, once you get past those three guys, I think it's a little less clear you know Marcus Epps has you know he was drafted by Minnesota I don't think he has any experience with Gannon though I think Gannon was already gone at that point but he he knows the system that they're going to try to install here he's got a little experience playing it uh, and then you look at a guy like you know Graylin Arnold Arnold Graylin Arnold was a pretty good football player I mean Graylin Arnold you know undrafted rookie free agent coming out of Baylor was one of these guys that when people ran film they they said yeah, you got to watch out for Graylin Arnold he's better than people think He's a guy that if it wasn't for the height issues and some other couple little things that, you know, I think it hurt him where he played, probably would have been drafted later, you know, later round draft pick. Um, and then, you know, we look at the veteran guy like Andrew Adams coming in. We'll see, guys. I mean, the depth here I think is a little concerning, but overall, you know, we'll have to see how this works out, guys. All right, y'all, leave your comments down below. What do you guys think about safety? It's definitely a position I wish we would have addressed it in the draft i wish we would have taken a little different approach to it but i'm excited to see some of these young guys in a new system and, and how they react i mean you got to give guys a chance you got to give them an opportunity but i'll be straightforward about it guys just you know personally between you guys and me i, I was hoping the eagles at least took one safety in this past you know this previous draft and to be honest with you i was kind of really hoping they took multiple safeties over the course of the 2020 draft to 2021 draft we really only walked away with Kayvon wallace i mean uh, you know, we can make arguments about the the young man we, we selected from LSU um, and, and whether or not he's he's a safety. I mean, they have him listed as a linebacker, but, uh, you know, I guess you could kind of count him in it if they change that in camp about him, but we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, he's more of a strong or, or Sam. He's either a strong safety or Sam linebacker, so we'd have to see, like, kind of what happens there with, with Stevens. But that's what I got for y'all, guys. Leave, leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think. Like, what do you guys think about this safety rotation what do you guys think about us really not addressing it during the draft the fact that you got Rodney McLeod who's now over 30 years old you got Anthony Harris who's now pushing 30 years old he's not quite there yet uh those guys are pretty much on one-year deals and then you got a draft pick in Kayvon Wallace we haven't seen play a lot yet you have an undrafted rookie free agent in Graylin Arnold you got a, a veteran guy you kind of signed to a one-year deal in Andrew Adams and you got a, a guy that's kind of been sticking around the back end of the roster for a little while here in Philadelphia you know, and Marcus Apps. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts, guys? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all so much for tuning in, guys, and I will catch y'all in the next video.